Welcome back mga kapasya. Nandito na naman po tayo sa isa pang episode ng SRHR Roundups Webcast. Ito po ang ating show tungkol sa mga kwento at mga conversations regarding sexual and reproductive health and rights in the Philippines. Ako po si Teta ng Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights. At ako naman si Chef ng WGNRR at Pasha PH is your channel on the latest updates on sexual and reproductive health and rights in the Philippines. So we invite everyone to follow our page, of course, and always be informed and help support women and girls make informed choices on their body, health, and lives free from discrimination, stigma, and violence. Ano ba ang Pasha page? This is managed by WGNRR and today's webcast is brought to us by the SHE Project with the support of Oxfam and Global Affairs Canada. 16 days of activism. Tomorrow na ang last day of that campaign. Although the 18 days uh, campaign to end violence hanggang uh, 12, December 12 shift, ba? Ano na ang mga nangyari since we started the campaign? Hello, Teta. As you mentioned, we are continuing our Safer in Solidarity campaign in line with the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. So, um, of course, dito sa Philippines, in-observe in, 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 in natin ang 18 days naman. So, meron pang extra two days. Um, but so far, ang dami naging activities within um, the 16 or 18 days nga. Um, in Pasha PH, we've live streamed and will continue to live stream the Women's Celebration of Life and Faith 2020 Conference of the Catholics for RH. Their last session is tomorrow, 1 to 4 p.m. You don't want to miss that. And we continue to support also um, the Waisili Women and Kabataan Contra Karahasan in Ilocos region and their continuing workshops on SRHR and gender-based violence. Last week, they had their session on how to spot and stop sexual abuse. And also on our page is the video recording naman of uh, what we live streamed last December 3, uh, around I think 10 p.m. to. So if you weren't able to catch it then, Baka gusto nyo balikan yung page natin at panoorin ang My Body, My Choice, Obstetric Violence in Healthcare Settings with the International Community of Women Living with HIV. The next day, December 4, tuloy-tuloy yung mga webcast talaga natin this uh, 16 days of activism. Uh, meron tayong uh, Zoom discussion and then webinar on safeguarding against sexual violence by Times Up Ateneo. And that and the next day, um, like I said, punung puno yung schedule natin, the 16 days. Uh, ang episode one ng Ergo Babay, a discussion on gender-based violence, vow, COVID-19 disaster. So lahat ng mga activities na to, lahat ng mga live stream natin, you will find our viewers, mga kapasya, you will find on our page. So we hope um, if you haven't uh, gone through them yet, hindi pa nyo pa napapanood, pumunta kayo sa page at panoorin nyo. Napakagandang mga discussions yung nangyari within the last week. Of course, hindi pa pahuli dyan yung ating SRHR Roundups webcast last week naman on how to achieve or how we can work together for a vow free PH with the Philippine Commission on Women. We had Deputy Executive Director Christine Balmes uh, to talk to us about vow policy and mechanisms in the Philippines. Ayan. So that's our SRHR Roundups for this week, abangan palagi ang ating webcast for more information and updates on sexual and reproductive health and rights in the Philippines. Yes. Yes, Miss Tet. So, um, we're back on our SRHR roundups. I think nakamute ka kanina, Miss Tet. Uh, today is of our, the part two of our uh, How Do We Achieve Vow Free PH special in line with our 16 days of activism and also, of course, in observance of the 18-day campaign here in the Philippines. So, um, Yung 16 days natin, alalahanin natin, nagsimula siya nung November 25 on the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women or EDVAW at nag e sa December 10, tomorrow, World Human Rights Day. For the Philippines, it ends on December 12 as uh, mentioned by um, PCW Deputy Executive Director Balmes. No? That's anti-trafficking day naman on December 12. So today, on our second part uh, of How Do We Achieve VAW Free PH, our live webcast features um, from the Fili Philippine Commission on Human Rights 
Attorney Twyla Rubin, Officer in Charge for the Center for Gender Equality and Women's Human Rights Commission. Hello, Attorney Twyla! Hello! Magandang hantanghali sa lahat. Magandang hantanghali, Tet, sa Chakashi. Salamat sa pag-imbita sa Commission on Human Rights Center for Gender Equality uh, Center Center for Gender Equality and Women's Human Rights sa inyong uh, show. Show talaga. Yes! <laughs> Mama, yung susunod nito meron na rin kayo yung mga dance at saka pa-contest oh, okay. <laughs> dito. Hi din po sa lahat ng nanonood and please write your comments and questions kung meron man kayo for Tony Twyla. Like Mark Devon of Yes! Hi Mark Devon! Kung may question ka for Tony Twyla, uh, message mo lang. Tony Twyla, I'm, I've heard very busy din kayo sa 18-day uh, campaign. What has been the activities of uh, CHR? CHR. Oo, sobrang busy-busy ng CHR because it's not just the 18-day campaign to end vow. Uh, we are also celebrating Human Rights Week. So, bilang Commission on Human Rights, patong-patong din yung multiple burden din talaga no, ng uh, mga nagtatrabaho sa CHR. So, we kicked off the 18-day campaign to end vow noong 25 through an online rally. May physical rally din ng mga kababaihan na uh, ang panawagan ay ma-address yung impunity, magkaroon ng accountability sa mga iba't ibang forma ng karahasan. At the CHR itself, we had our online rally noong November 25, no? Sa hapon, uh, may mga nagsalita ng mga kababaihan organization. And uh, gaya din ng sinasabi, it's a call to end all forms of violence. But we also say that uh, in order to end all forms of violence, kailangan natin may accountability, kailangan natin may end yung impunity, kailangan din natin ma-address yung iba't ibang uh, yung poverty. Kasi maraming mga uri din ng karahasan na na gugat o nag, uh, nagagaling din doon yes. sa uh, nagbubunga bunga siya ng kahirapan. So, meron din aming mga different mga webinars sa aming mga regional offices and bukas ay yung ano na talaga natin no, observance of uh, Human Rights Day. So, tuloy-tuloy lang po yung aming uh, celebration observance ng 18-day campaign at pinapangunahan ito ng central office and of course kasama namin ang aming mga regional office uh, sa 16 regional office ng CHR. Thank you for sharing. Tomorrow, magkakaroon din po kami ng concert as our contribution to the Human Rights Day to mm -hmm. highlight the different forms of human rights violations. Ang sinasabi niyo nga, Attorney Twyla, how we can call for uh, accountability. Uh, Attorney Twyla, we really want to use this opportunity for the webcast to tell our viewers as well and our advocates to know more about the role of uh, CHR, lalo na dito sa mga issues na daladala -dala natin. So, I'll start with asking you, uh, ano po ba yung role? Ano yung mandate? Gusto na natin Commission on Human Rights. Sige. So, para siguro sa mga hindi nakakakilala ng CHR, uh, kami ay isang national human rights institution. Uh, independent kami na institution and created by the constitution. So, walang CHR pa before. Uh, we had the Philippine, ano no, Human Rights Commission yata yung forerunner ng CHR. Mm -hmm. But noong 1997 constitution, nagkaroon na ng National Human Rights Institution or creation ng CHR. At ito ay bunsod sa history din ng maraming pang-aabuso sa panahon ng uh, diktatorya. No? So ano yung mandato mm -hmm. ng CHR? Una ay isulong yung karapatang pantao ng lahat ng mga Pilipino. No? At ang sinasabi din ay hindi lamang to promote and advocate for human rights, ito rin ay tutok sa human rights ng mga vulnerable at marginalized. Kami ay naatasan na mag-advocate. Ibig sabihin, gaya ng ginagawa nyo, uh, nag, uh, ano tayo, nagkakaroon ng kampanya for human rights, we promote human rights, we, we advocate for human rights, pero meron din kaming mandato na, aside from advocacy, meron kaming mandato na mag-investigate. Uh, kung ibig sabihin, kung may paglabag ng karapatang pantao, maaaring pumunta sa CHR at para maimbestigahan ang mga paglabag na ito. So that's our investigative or our protection mandate. Uh, kung titingnan natin sa, sa um, constitution, nakatutok siya sa civil and political rights. At uh, ibig sabihin nito, um, mga violation in Pero civil and political rights yung tutok natin, pero at the same time, kami rin ay nag-investiga ng mga violation na economic, social, cultural rights. So, ang mga pagkatapos na nag-investiga, magkakaroon ng resolution, nire-recommend namin ito sa ibang ahensya ng gobyerno. So, pangalawa yun, advocacy or tinatawag naming 
promotion, advocacy and promotion. Meron kaming human rights protection, ito yung pag-iimbestiga. And then we have an advisory work kasi kami din ay uh, naatasan na magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa gobyerno pag hindi nito ginagawa yung kanyang mandato ng maayos o hindi natutupad yung mga nap napirmahan natin ng mga treaties. Kasi alam natin, Tets, no, siguro na pag uusapan niya rin nyo sa uh, webcast na ito na marami mm -hmm. napirmahang treaty ang Pilipinas. Kasama dito yung SIDO para sa kababaihan, kasama dito yung uh, Convention Against Torture, Convention on the Rights of Children. So kami... Pag hindi nagagampan na ng Pilipinas yung kanya mga tungkulin under sa treaties, maaari kami mag-report at magbigay ng rekomendasyon. So yun yung aming tatlo na mga core mandates, protection, promotion, and policy work. So, uh, at turn to Ayla, when you say you have the parang recommendations mula dun sa investigative ano ninyo, parang results ninyo, sino yung dapat mag-act? Sino ang uh, sino may accountability doon sa, ano, sa report ninyo? Or gagawin dapat yung report ninyo? Depende, no? Kasi pagkatapos ng report, depende kung anong kaso yung nilapit sa amin. So, halimbawa, kung kasong extrajudicial killing at naka-identify doon ay ang polis na uh, naakusahan na siya yung gumawa nito at ang mayroon siya naging biktima. So, identified yung tao, nagkaroon ng investigasyon, nagkaroon ng finding ang CHR na yung polis talaga yung gumawa. Fino-forward namin ito sa ahensya ng gobyerno na tumututok doon sa mga kaso pertaining to policemen. Halimbawa, sa ombudsman, doon namin sila for forward and then the ombudsman will undertake its own investigation para uh, magkakaroon na ng uh, criminal case against the person at magkakapagpataw na ng penalty. So, yun yung sa, sa civil and political rights. Meron din naman din kung for example din uh, violation ng Magna Carta of Women kasi aside from our mandate under the constitution, kami din ay naatasan na gender umbud under Magna Carta of Women. Ano naman ibig sabihin ng gender umbud? As gender umbud, kami din ay para tagabantay kung nagagawa ng gobyerno at mga ahensya ng gobyerno yung kanyang mga mandato under Magna Carta of Women. Uh, naatasan din kami mag-establish ng guideline para makapag-access ng mga kababaihan ng remedies. Uh, under 9710, mag-enhance ng protection and promotion ng kababaihan at batang babae. And then, mm -hmm. sinasabi din ito, mag-assist sa pag-file ng cases against individuals and agencies. So, isang halimbawa nito, nung panahon ng kampanya, nagkaroon ng rape joke yung ating then-candidate pa lang, ngayon presidente na, no? Meron siyang rape joke. May group na mga kababaihan na nagsabi na this is a violation of Magna Carta of Women. Mm -hmm. So, sila ay pumunta sa CHR as complainant Inimbestigahan ng CHR ito at sinabi ng CHR na tama, hindi lang ito paglabag ng Magna Carta of Women ang pag-utter ng rape joke, ito rin ay forma ng discrimination against women at nakaka-violate ng SIDO. So yung aming findings, dahil kami ay recommendatory, yun lang yun din yung limitasyon ng aming power, finorward namin ito sa office ng civil service dahil sila naman yung nakatutok sa mga uh, government officials. Kaya lang, medyo challenging yung decision na yun dahil presidente na yung uh, perpetrator or respondent then so hindi mo hmm. ma-implement. Pero yung recommendation namin before na kasama na dapat may training yung mga workers ng government, uh, gender sensitivity, ni in-implement at ni-recognize naman yun ng, ng, ano, ng civil service commission. Another example for ex na tutok sa gender, Halimbawa, meron kang kaso ng isang barangay captain na ayaw magbigay ng protection order. Meron ding mga ganun na nagsasampa sa CHR para magkaroon ng accountability yung barangay captain. At sabihin na may violation yun and then we refer to the appropriate na agency na makapag-meet out ng disciplinary action. So kung isu-shortcut natin ano yung role ng CHR to advocate uh, human rights, women's human rights as gender umbud, mm -hmm. um, at then, meron din kaming role na mag-advise sa government kung ano yung dapat nilang gawin para ma ma para ma gampanan nila yung kanilang tungkulin pagdating sa human rights. Later siguro yung side na yun, ipapakita natin kung ano yung ginagawa namin pagdating sa panahon ng COVID pandemic. Meron din pa na kami yung legal assistance. Pag ah, okay. meron kayo na human rights violation, kailangan nyo ng legal advice nagbibigay din ng CHR to our regional offices. Bagamat, hindi kami nakakapag legal representation or hindi kami yung pwedeng mag-appear sa court gaya ng sa PAO. 
Ano yung usual attorney twila na misconception or na role or parang ano yung isang expectation ng possible like the no, no normal the average person about uh, commission and human rights that is not actually part of the mandate or role of CHR. Yung iba, inaasahan nila na sabi nila, o yung CHR bakit puro ang tinututukan ay yung mga kamalian ng gobyerno, pagkukulang ng gobyerno, bakit pulis, bakit uh, ang tutok sa sundalo, bakit hindi kasama si NPA, bakit hindi kasama yung uh, mga kriminal. Actually, tinututukan din ito ng Commission on Human Rights and if titingnan natin yung aming mga statements, we condemn acts of violence both by yung criminals, mga rapists. We condemn as well acts of uh, violence if committed by allegedly committed by uh, mga NPA. Pero talaga din, we condemn acts na may mga violation lalo na pag government officials or uh, um, mga agent of the state. Dahil ang ating tinitingnan ay human rights obligation mm-hmm. at ang basic talaga pagdating sa human rights ay ang may obligation ay yung estado. Kung kaya uh, mat, nagmamatyag bilang watchdog ang CHR na maayos na nagagampanan ng uh, gobyerno yung kanyang tungkulin. Kaya kami ay pag may nakitang pagkukulang talaga bilang watchdog, no, bilang bantay, uh, sinasabi namin nagkukall out kami. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na hindi namin kinukall out yung iba. Isa din na inaasahan nila ay bakit uh, hindi kami nagpapakulong ng mga rapist Um, isa din ay ang nagpapakulong po ng mga rapist ay obviously yung ating kapulisan. Wala pong kapangyarihan ang CHR. Pwede kami mag-issue ng statement condemning uh, yung rape. Pwede kami mag-issue ng statement na nagpupuna sa isang police station kung hindi sensitibo yung kanilang paghandle ng isang rape case o hindi maayos yung kanilang pagtrato sa babaeng biktima. Pero yung pagpapakulong mismo ito ay mandato ng ating executive branch ng government. So, kailangan natin siyang tingnan na meron tayong estekutibo, meron na taga-implement ng batas, meron tayong legislatibo, gumagawa ng batas, judiciary, yun yung nagja-judge kung kulong ka na talaga for life or not. Mm-hmm. And then, yung isa naman, eh, yung mga constitutional commission gaya ng CHR mm-hmm. na yung sa amin talaga ay taga-bantay ng ginagawa, uh, parang konsensya ng gobyerno. So, yung Ako ganun si- pala ang yes. constitutional body, we don't call it a government agency para lang po sa ano no mas mas klaro sa lahat. How do you refer to si to bodies like CHR? Are you a, a, a government body, an agent government agency? We are, we are an independent independent body. So independent body but we are part of the government of the Philippines. So gaya din lang ng ating four pillars siguro mas maganda nga hindi ko lang nasama sa slide ko. Makikita natin yung pagkahati-hati yung separation ng different uh, uh, ano ng gobyerno no as legislative, judiciary at saka yung ating uh, executive. Ang sa HR ay still government funded by government. Uh, kami po ay kami din ay civil servants. Uh, nire-release at dinihear, hinihear yung aming budget ng ng legislatibo, mm-hmm. pero kami ay independent in the sense that we are able to make recommendations, we are able to make monitoring of the government's performance na kanyang treaty obligations. Mm-hmm. At, uh, at kung titingnan, kami din ay compliant sa Paris Principles. Ang Paris Principles kasi, ito yung mga prinsipyo na nagpapakita ng isang national human rights institution ay isang independent body sa isang na within a country. Marami kasing mga kagaya ng sa HR sa ibang bansa. Mm-hmm. So, ang mandato talaga ng mga NHRI, ay tinatawag National Human Rights Institution, mm-hmm. ay mag-promote ng human rights, mag-monitor ng mga ginagawa ng uh, state. Kung natutupad ito yung kanyang obligations. So, government pa rin kami. Thank you for clarifying that, Attorney Twyla, no? kasi makakatulong ito for our viewers and to those who are parang nagmamatsyag sa mga kaso. Yun nga sinasabi nyo, lalo na sa age of social media, that easier the, the population or anyone could make comments or ask CHR, at least alam natin, ano ba yung differences at ano ba yung role and mandate ng CHR? Which brings me po to the question, especially with regards to gender-based violence, uh, who can report to CHR? Ano yung mga cases na pwede namin idulog sa CHR? By the way, sorry po, I know we prepared the slide but we are experiencing technical difficulties. Hindi lang okay po lang po makikita. Lang. Yes po. Kwentuhan na lang po tayo to. Kwentuhan tayo. Yes. <laughs> Walang problema sa akin yan. Gali tayo mag-adapt. At madaldal din ako kagaya mo. So, 
magsasurvive tayo. So, yung una, ano yung pwedeng idulog sa CHR? Na-mention ko na kanina na human rights violations. So, ang human rights violations, hindi lamang yung pagpatay din naman o mga pagpatay, ta, lalo na yung involve yung mga state agents. Um, by virtue of the Magna Carta of Women, uh, pwede pa rin humingi ng legal advice at mag-file ng kaso sa CHR if you experience gender-based violence. Pero madalas, ang ginagawa namin pag gender-based violence ay ang ginagawa namin ay nagbibigay kami ng legal advice. Mm -hmm. And then, we refer kasi kung immediate talaga yung pangailangan na babae, halimbawa kailangan niya ng barangay protection order, we know na kailangan niyang pumunta sa barangay agad. Or kung kailangan niya na makulong yung tao, And knowing that the mandate of the CHR, hindi kami pwedeng magpakulong, mm. we refer agad doon sa PNP. Pero madalas, maraming pumupunta sa amin dahil, una, hindi nila alam how to proceed. At isang importanteng bagay yun eh. Parang, alam ko may yes. nangyari sa akin na violation. Alam mm -hmm. ko dapat put, pupunta ako sa police. Mm -hmm. Pero na-intimidate sila, wala silang tiwala. So they would want to confer first with someone na sa tingin nila ay napagkakatiwalaan nila and so doon pumapasok yung aming legal assistance and even we do that no sa aming e-lawyering platform meron din kasi kaming e-lawyering na sinasabi na uh, pwede kang tumawag for human rights violation and then bibigyan ka ng advice at and the reason din na we refer immediately to the appropriate agency ay baka matagal yung pag investigate ng CHR at recommendatory lang yung finding. Whereas kung agad-agad na napunta sa police station, agad na matugunan. Pero importante din yung part na may nag-guide dun sa, ano, sa tao. Like, like sa pandemic, mamaya siguro eh, pagkakwento ko sa inyo na uh, mostly yung mga cases ng BAUSI, may mga cases ng uh, sexual harassment, hindi na sila, ang nakafile sa amin would be legal assistance. And we give them advice. Mainsan nga, step by step eh. Hindi kami nagkikita kasi remote. Pero sinistep by step ko siya na, una, magpunta ka muna sa barangay, kuha ka ng barangay protection order. Ay, ayaw ako bigyan ng barangay protection order dahil ganito, ganito. Ah, sige, pakausap mo sa akin yung barangay captain. So yung step by step na na ganun, tapos nakalagpas na siya sa barangay, punta ka sa social welfare officer ng city. Ay ma'am, mayroon na naman problema sa ano, pakausap mo ulit. Mm -hmm. Pwede kasi gano'n na, once a uh, government agency intervenes, uh, mas naging positive na yung kanilang action. Yes, so, na-facilitate. Mm, na I think very important, Attorney Twyla, na may napupuntahan ng isang survivor na agency or group of people that they know at the start with na who would be on their side. That who, mm -hmm. or, but who would understand them as as survivors, victim survivors? Napaka importante po yun para sa tingin ko na in terms of role ng CH, mm -hmm. uh, ng CHR. Ah, uh, na naikukwento niyo po yung tungkol sa COVID during the pandemic. Ito ni Tuwa. Ano yung mga naging current experiences niyo? How when it comes to your monitoring, what has happened? Itong panahon na since lockdown and then the different kinds of quarantine levels na meron tayo. So una, nung nangyari yung pandemic, alam na agad no, na marami na kasing literatura na nagsasabi na pagdating sa crisis, any crisis or disaster, uh, mataas na chance na tataas yung incidence ng mm -hmm. violence against women. So alam natin yun, mayroon ng research na ganun. So mm -hmm. ang ginagawa, so sa next slide siguro, ang ginagawa natin, mm -hmm. sabi natin, we anticipate that women would be more vulnerable to violence because of it. Kasi currently nga, gaya ng sa slide na pinapakita ngayon, wala tong pandemic, ito na yung current data natin. Globally, one of one out of three women nakakaranas ng physical and sexual violence. 15 million women experience or girls experience trafficking or forced sex at some point of their life. So yung next slide naman magpapakita sa inyo ng data naman dito sa Pilipinas. Ang data sa Pilipinas ay one out of four women experience spousal violence. Ito ay before pa pandemic ha. And mm -hmm. this is based in our 2017 National Demographic Health Survey. At sinasabi din dito So na out of those na nakaranas, only one-third report. So meron kang two-thirds na hindi nagre-report. At ito ay ini-expect natin na lalala yung hindi pagre-report pagdating sa pandemic because of the limited, yung mga quarantine procedures. So meron tayong nakikita insight dito. So sa so mga next slide, makikita natin yung mga issues na na-observe ng CHR pagdating sa pandemic. Skip na siguro dun sa ano, dun sa... 
pink slides, yes. Yan. Uh, una naming sinabi na una, pagdating ng crisis, dapat kailangan natin i-highlight yung impact ng pandemic na disproportionate sa women, girls, at saka vulnerable sector. Sabi natin, uh, meron na kasi tayong pre-existing inequality. Alam na natin na nakasasubject yung mga kababaihan sa violence. At alam natin na pagdating ng krisis, baka lalala pa ito. At ang responses natin dapat mas uh, nakakatutok kung paano pa paano tugunan yung posibleng paglala. Ang isang naobserbahan namin nung panahon ng pandemic din ay yung mga babaeng nakaranas or vulnerable na, mas lalo silang vulnerable. Gaya ng mga persons with disabilities, sabi nila, di ba, kung wala pang pandemic, hirap sila sa communication, hirap sila sa uh, transportation. Sabi nila, yung mga nakakausap namin, parang dumoble or trumiple daw yung kanilang disability. Kasi dati, hindi na sila makalabas, hirap sila sa transportation. Ngayon, na wala ka talagang jeep, wala kang bus, wala kang uh, tricycle, mas lalong nas mahirap yung kanilang communication and it affects how they access services. Yung mga SAP, yung kanilang mga relief goods, yung kanilang information how to protect themselves kung walang sign language interpreter. Kung nakaranas din sila ng violence, nakakadagdag din ito ng barriers. Kasi wala ka ng sign language interpreter, uh, o magre-report pero hindi ka nga makarating sa ano yung police station kasi wala kang tricycle during the time of the ECQ and meron ding instances na sarado yung mga police station so mas uh, or sarado or nire-refuse sila ng mga police station na sinasabihan sila na saka ka na lang mag-file after the ECQ and then yun yung isa natin nakikita na yung mga vulnerable na halimbawa gaya na sa mga displacement camps yung mga evacuees mas lalo sila naging vulnerable dahil sa kahirapan ng paghihanap buhay, etc. In terms naman sa vow, na ang isa naming key talaga na, na nababahala kami ay nag-drop yung reporting. So ang tawag namin dito ay alarming decrease ng reporting of GBV and documented accounts. Uh, meron kami na document na accounts na breakdown ng referral mechanism. Minsan kasi, nung start pa lang, sinasabi na ay mababa yung GBV na report sa PNP. Para bang mabuti itong ano, o magandang balita. Pero actually, <laughs> naturally, na oh, naturally so, po, diba, yung, parang bumaba yung case, ibig sabihin, mas konti yung vow. Ganun yung parang, nangyari. Yes, yung, yung pang-araw-araw na logic namin no? pag naisip mong ganun. So, ano po ba yung, oh. this is very interesting for you to say, uh, Attorney Twyla, bakit siya alarming that decrease? Mm. Alarming siya kasi it could be indicative of the barriers that women experience in reporting. Kasi nga, um, kung titignan mo yung orange, kahit di natin tinan yung number, the orange mm. data reflects data from March to April. The blue one, ano siya, reflects data ng, ano, ng February to March. Makikita natin na may drop talaga. And the next figure will also show us na even yung mga hospitals ng DOH, meron kasi silang Women and Children Protection Unit at mm -hmm. sila ay tumatanggap ng mga walk-in cases ng sexual violence, sexual abuse, na kipakita nila sa data nila na noong January nasa 900-700 yung walk-in nila. Nung pagdating ng April, sa next slide pa, pagdating nung April, nasa 100 na lang yung walk-in nila na, na mga kliyente. So, ano ibig sabihin ito? Nakakabahala. Kasi uh, malamang may mga nangyayaring violence at hindi ito na report So, tingin natin, merong, ang iba nga, yung isang, isa din yata sa magandang na-coin na phrase dito ay shadow pandemic. Yung hmm. nangyayari siya pero hindi nakikita naging invisible at yung in-anticipate din natin na after malift yung mga quarantine measures, baka dun palang maglalabas yung mga kababaihan at mag-report. And then isa din na natin nakita sa cases of rape, sexual harassment, uh, acts of lasciviousness, yung drop niya nasa 50% eh, if you compare it from 2019 data. Kung same month ng kinumpere namin, March to May, end of May, March to end of May ng 2019 and March to end of May ng 2020, ganun yung drop 50%. So nak napakamalaki na nasaan yung mga posible naging biktima na hindi pa nakapag-report. And yung sa breakdown ng referral mechanism na ikwento ko na yung iba, nakakalungkot na dito sa aming GBV portal sa CHR, uh, nakareceive kami ng mga complaint na even in cases of rape 
o ng minor, nasasabihan sila ng police na balik na lang kayo after nag ECQ. So, syempre, nangyari yung rape ng April, sabihin ka na balik kayo ng ECQ, yan tagal ng ECQ kasi in-extend ng in-extend. So, we call that the breakdown ng referral mechanism. We have also documented na nagre-reklamo yung mga babae na reason nila why they don't report ay pinakasimple, walang tricycle, walang masakyan during the time ng ECQ. Yung iba naman, hindi sila yung may hawak ng quarantine pass. So how can they report if their perpetrator is the one holding the quarantine pass? Yes. Ang iba naman din, na, di ba? isa lang, one per household eh. At saka kung ikaw yung parang minor, wala ka nga talaga. Kasi di po ba yung parang head ng household or sino yung strong oh. enough to go out and oh. buy the groceries? Oh, oh, oh. So sa kanya iyan, no, siya yung identified na head of household. Eh, paano yun yung perpetrator mo? How will you be able to to get out? Or if you're an LGBT child or gay child ka and yung perpetrator mo is your family, how will you be able to get out? Hindi ikaw yung may holder ng quarantine pass. So, yun yung mga nakikita natin ng mga barriers. Ang iba naman, uh, nakita din natin na pagdating sa shelter, mm-hmm. uh, challenging din. Kasi the shelter, supposedly, if you're a survivor of violence, dun ka pupunta para meron kang uh, temporary uh, refuge. No? Mm-hmm. Ang nangyari nung time ng ECQ, the shelters were also in lockdown. So, ibig sabihin, ano, sila mismo, hindi sila tumatanggap ng bagong kliyente dahil takot sila na maka- mahawaan yung mga kliyente nila nasa loob, which is understandable. Pero ang problem, how about those na nakakaranas ng violence during time ng ECQ? Saan sila pupunta? So, during that time, pati ang CHR, nagkaroon kami ng temporary shelter sa CHR. Hindi kami shelter, hindi kami DSWD. But we told our boss na I think we need to because we have clients na wala tayong mapagpapasahan, hindi pa tumatanggap ang haven. Kasi na ano din sila, parang meron silang isang case. So nung nagkaroon sila ng isang case, nag-lockdown sila. So they said after na June, pwedeng mag-admit. And then if you're going to admit a client, kailangan mo na mag-PCR sila. So, those are barriers no, ng ating referral mechanism. At, at sinasabi ng CHR na, una, kailangan i-update yung referral mechanism sa panahon ng disaster or crisis. Um, kailangan din natin i-rethink how we address cases of violence. Hindi pwede yung normal natin na mag-walk in ka, you expect them to walk in and file. Because kayo nga mga tao, hindi ka nga maka, ano, in, hindi makalabas. So, how what are the more creative ways na ma-address natin at ma-protectanhan yung mga kababaihan sa panahon ng pandemic. And it's good that maraming mga initiatives na na-develop like Luna's Collective. I admire Luna's Collective kasi no, meron silang na-develop na online counseling na if you're a victim of violence, pwede kang mag-online tawag mo pa-counsel. Kami din, we develop a reporting portal na at least kung hindi man namin mapuntahan yung babae, agad-agad na matawagan magaguide kung ano yung pwede niyang gawin and then yung options niya at least lalawak. So ito yung mga iilan lang na mga breakdown of referral pathways that we were able to document. So and then meron pa rin pala, meron pa kaming insights. Meron din mm-hmm. kami na na may emerging forms of gender-based violence related to the pandemic itself at saka yung mm-hmm. sa mga serbisyo na binibigay ng gobyerno. Narinig niyo yung mga storya na mga nanay na nasasampal ng barangay captain or pinapagalitan or binibiri. Maraming mga ganong cases dahil either yung nanay ay naniningil, nasa yung kanilang relief goods or bakit sila na-exclude. At sa paniningil na yon sila ay nakakaranas ng, ano, ng violence from state agents. Other forms naman yung mga cases ng ating mga gays na in Tarlac, ay in, in Zambales and in Zamboanga na yung penalty nila for violating quarantine rules ay pinaghahalik, pinagsasayaw, pinahaircut sila, yung pinuputula ng buhok na talagang una, very gendered kasi it's attacking their uh, sexuality, no? kanilang yeah. gender identity at saka kanilang sexual orientation. Na hindi naman ganun yung pagpataw ng penalty sa iba. So nakikita din yung intersecting na discrimination bilang LGBT no 
and uh, at nakikita natin yun sa penalties meron din mga instances of course na harassment sa mga checkpoints yung mga ano mismo yung mga nagbabantay nakita natin yan no and of course yung nabalitang sex for pass although walang nag ano nag report sa CHR we try to reach out medyo hirap kasi at takot din yung mga tao na mag report but nakakabahala yun How and about then to- at uh, to yeah. twice, yung na nababalita kasi yung mga cases na the, the young especially yung young girls minors who were parang kinuha dahil may violation sila ng quarantine and curfew and then afterwards were found out uh, rate uh di, were you able to confirm these cases na nasa media po um currently wala ay hindi pa namin na i-confirm yung ano na yon yung mga report na yon mm-hmm. pero yung mga regional offices namin yung nagii-investigating cases like that and yung isa kong sinabi isa din pala namin na hinahighlight ay uh, lethal yung effect din ng breakdown ng referral mechanism gaya ng the case ni Fabel Uh, alam natin yung case niya, nangyari yun ng lockdown, siya ay nagsampa ng kaso, humingi siya ng protection sa polis, hindi ito na ibigay sa kanya, pagbalik niya, uh, pag uwi niya, siya ay nabaril. So nakita natin na dun sa gap na yun ay talagang uh, buhay yung nakataya. And uh, in that cases, kung sexual violence for those who are detained because of curfew violations, hindi ko alam kung anong specific na case because baka pwede mong isend sa akin yung link. Very mm-hmm. fun ko lang. It's already filed. Kasi hindi ko na maalala lahat ng mga naipasok. Kasi even sa CHR, kahit hindi na file sa amin, pag na-monitor namin yung case na naka-report, we do check if it's already filed with the prosecutor's office. May mga may mga report nga na may alleged sexual violence because of uh, curfew violation or even those sa mga pag-implement ng quarantine uh, rules. Uh, buti ngayon nag-ease up na. No? So, boom, nawa, wala na rin yung mga ganong mga klaseng uh, reklamo. But also, tumaas din yung sexual harassment and violation ng Safe Spaces Act online. Lalo na online sexual harassment din. Uh, mataas siya. Um, kasi nga, nakatamba yung mga tao lahat online. Yes. At uh, uh, maraming humihingi ng tulong pertaining sa mga videos, images na pinapasa-pasa. Um, and challenge naman natin dito, although meron na tayong Safe Spaces Act, nagpe-penalize na online sexual harassment, mahirap kasi mag talaga ng cases uh, of GBB committed online, lalo na pag fake accounts yung ginagamit ng mga perpetrator, yung anonymity, yung mm-hmm. kapis na magtanggal ng mga ng ano, ng data and mag-create ng bagong account, doon nahihirapan tayo na mapursue yan. I think it's one thing that we as feminist, as activist, kailangan natin upuan Uh, talagang tulong-tulong natin na tugunan no, na magkaroon tayo ng digital safety, digital literacy, at saka access to the justice pagdating sa online uh, forms of violence. So, kasi yung online form po, kasi ang hirap nga yung redress, ano, attorney to Ayla, at saka yung justice, oh, oh. kasi oh, yung binabanggit na what's in the web, it can never be removed, kasi hindi mo naman mm-hmm. talaga alam who was the digital file, kaya, and oh, then, oh. yung mga forms ng violation, every time someone watches that video, it's like paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit yung violation, and at the same time, yung hate speech, at saka yung mga very easy for trolls and even real persons with real accounts to actually like just spew hate comments yeah. mga body shaming comments to someone even especially to celebrities who say mm-hmm. uh, parang things that might not be against or possibly then usually yung nangyayari ngayon could be anti-government so madali yung mga uh, ano yung pag-atake uh, online which sa tingin natin online lang but could have re- have real life uh, implications and threats to 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 women agree at saka doon din nakikita natin na i think uh, ang safe spaces act kasi 2019 siya pinasa yung IRR niya approved this year din lang or ano din lang siya ngayon lang na taon na approve yung IRR Uh, or no, last year pala, pero ngayon naman ginagawa ng mga agencies yung kanilang operational procedures adapting the IRR. Ang isa na nag-looking forward kami ay yung operational procedures ng PNP, NBI, pertaining to online sexual harassment. Kasi doon talaga tayo magigiya kung 
uh, paano ba natin to i-address na may misogynistic remarks kang pakalat-kalat, homophobic, transphobic remarks. And ang iba talaga, totoo, hindi sila nagtatago sa fake account. Even their own real accounts ginagamit nila as if wala tayong batas that uh, yes. penalizes it. Which reminds me of your so, comment at the start of the webcast, Attorney Twyla, yung impunity. Yung emboldened, na emboldened mm -hmm. talaga yung mga misogynist and hateful comments ng parang mm -hmm. ano lang, maybe also because they know, perpetrators know, na hindi din ganun kadali to ask for ano for redress or file cases against them. Very complicated, mahirap mag-file ng kaso sa Pilipinas. So, oh. And in cases of... Lalo na pag online. Oo, oh, oh, at in cases of gender-based violence, yung stigma mas malakas pa doon sa victim survivor compared to oh, the perpetrator stigma. Malaki yung mataas yung victim blaming. Kaya siguro maganda din tingnan tong slide na to. If you remember sa gitna ng before ng iha ako movement or mm -hmm. the one that that started it. Yung mm -hmm. PNP guidelines how not to be raped in region 4, yun yung start eh. Na doon natin makikita na bakit magpaulit-ulit gumagawa ang PNP ng ganitong guidelines. Mm -hmm. Paulit-ulit na rin kasi kami sa CHR na nag issue ng advisory. I think we already have three advisories mm -hmm. na ganito yung topic. And palagi naming sinasabi, of course, you are survivor-centered yung approach, you do not blame the woman, you create an enabling environment na dapat walang karhasan nangyayari, hindi mo ipopulis kung ano yung sinusot ng babae. May rapist dahil may nang re rape hindi dahil sa kung ano yung suot ng babae. Mm -hmm. But you could still see that it's very rampant, no? Yung, yung, mga, yung mga victim blaming. And even from the ranks of the government. And dun pumapasok yung role ng CHR. Um, most recent yata namin na ginawa ay uh, yung nagkaroon ng briefing ng disaster management briefing. Mm -hmm. uh, na karon ng sex jokes about uh, at objectification of women kasi may komentaryo na uh, kaya ka ganyan kasi kulang ka sa sex or dapat ganito ka mga babae kasi pag may babae ka ganyan ganyan so talagang nakikita na sabi ng iba ano bang masama doon sa sinabi doon yung sabi natin din ay may magna card of women tayo yung sinasabi dapat may pagkakapantay sa babae at lalaki dapat nirerespeto at, at may non discrimination pero ang problema doon sa mga komentaryo yung ganun ay kinukulong yung babae as objects of uh, sexual gratification ng mga kalalakihan. So sabi din natin na hindi ito appropriate given in a disaster briefing na maraming mangyari, nangyaring violence sa kababaihan during the time ng typhoon. Meron ngang nanganak na babae sa, sa evacuation center. Merong na-rape na babae sa kasagsaga ng bagyo. So sabi na Sabi natin, instead na tutukan kung paano maging gendered and intersectional yung response, bakit napupunta sa sex jokes? And we said na, as CHR, uh, we want to, kailangan namin gampanan yung aming mandato to advise the government na una, pagdating sa karahasan laban sa kababaihan, hindi lang mandato ng estado na i-prevent ito at i-address kung mayroong gumagawa nito, mandato din ng gobyerno na hindi gawin ito. Ibig sabihin yung officials ng government mismo hindi dapat nagpe-perpetuate ng violence against yes. women. So, when, when when you uh, face that kind of situation turn it while no yung when you point out what's wrong and then the usual response is ano ba yung masama doon which means you to uh, realize na ah ito pa rin pala talaga yung parang every day and parang pang-araw-araw mm -hmm. yung isa ng karamihan. Dati, hindi lang nila sinasabi. Ngayon, mas emboldened uh -huh. lang sila sabihin kasi ngayon, culture of immunity na binabanggit nyo. Actually, ito, ito, wala gusto rin kitang kamustahin as an advocate. Kasi as working in parang in the environment na uh, madaming advocates or we are in the advocacy, sometimes dahil ang araw mo siyang ginagawa, pakiramdam mo, the dif malaking difference na talaga yung nangyayari. And then suddenly, mm -hmm. You hear this and you watch this being done by government officials themselves. Uh, how do you feel about that? As a, as a woman, as a feminist, uh, ano yung mga commitments and resolve na 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 perform sa yo every time you you are in this kind of situation. Yung una, I recognize ko na traumatic siya. Kasi maraming mga kababaihan ay victims of violence. And um, siguro sa mga iba na hindi nakakaranas ng trauma no, uh, from violence ah. Uh, Swerte kayo, hindi kayo nakakaranas mm -hmm. ng trauma. Pero para sa mga maraming mga kababaihan na nakakaranas ng trauma from violence, to hear violence in TV, to watch it 
in uh, to watch it and to hear it from government officials traumatic yun eh traumatic na parang in your face uh, yung mga pinaglalaban mo ayan na naman masasubject ka na naman ng ganito sexist misogynistic remarks remarks na nagpapababa sa estado ng mga kababaihan pero you also realize at you resolve mo na kailangan niyo pa ring patuloy yung laban kaya nga nung pinipresent ko yung yung slides nito nung rising misogyny nakita din natin yung rising resistance of women's movement. At ang maganda naman doon ay, alam mo, alam natin matagal na nagre-resist yung women's movement. Pero nakikita din natin na tumataas yung suporta sa Me Too movement, tumataas yung suporta sa every woman, tumataas yung suporta sa babae ako, and then we have iha ko, and pabata na pabata yung lumalaban. So nakaka-inspire yun kasi as 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 our feminist lolas and feminist foremothers, <laughs> nga or gusto mo nila lumaban pero talagang minsan kailangan mag-pause nakikita natin na maraming lumalaban na mga kat- kababaihan, batang babae at maraming nagko-call out so kailangan nating i-stress talaga na yes we fight for laws we celebrate laws, policies that address violence against women uh, we, we but we still also have to work on uh, accountability kasi hindi mo masasabing may end mo yung violence against women kung hindi nakikita na babae that they can trust the system. Kung hindi nila nakikita na nag-work yung referral mechanism, yung access to justice, maraming mga babae will stay and remain silent. Kasi nakikita nila na ang kawalan ng suporta dun sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno na pupuntahan nila. So we have to create and we have to continue uh, reminding the government na part ng ang trabaho ng gobyerno ay to create that kind of environment na survivor-centered yung approach. Para pag ako ang nakaranas ng panggagahasa, ako nakaranas ng sexual harassment, ang hindi ko unang isipin na kakayanin ko ba ito? Anong gagawin nila dito? O sisisipin ko? Ay, Oo, sisisihin ba ako? Mararanasan ko bang magahasa ako ng 100 times over uh, because I filed the case? Mm-hmm. Or yung, magka, yung pagtingin mo sa agency, sabihin mo, ay, alam ko, it's a champion nila uh, na makakuha ako ng ustisya. Unfortunately, hindi, mala, medyo malayo pa tayo dun eh. So, kailangan pa nating mag-work with many government agencies yeah. para mas strengthen yung response. Yung gender, yung sensitivity ng unang na-approach siya ng babaeng nakaranas ng wow, napaka-importante yun. Kasi ikaw yung una niyang nilapitan. So pag once na nasabihan mo siya ng very discouraging words or words na napapakita na gini-blame. Uh-huh. Invalidating also. Uh, invalidating the experience. Hindi na yun babalik. So magsa-silence na taas yung mga maraming silence na And so it's important to have that and it's important to have uh, more and more champions within the government. Importante sa akin din na to work with government na frontliners kasi sila yung nauna nauna doon. Alam natin na maraming mga government frontliners na overburdened. So kailangan natin i-remind sila bakit uh, kailangan uh, hindi invalidate yung storya ng babae, bakit meron kang attitude of belief at kailangan nila makita yung impact nang sinasabi nila dun sa karahasa, kanaranasan ng babae. Kaya nung sinabi kasi, like, this ECQ lang, may nagreklamo sa akin, ma'am, sinabihan ba naman ako paano ako na-rape? E wala naman ako laceration. So parang, how do you, at this time, when we have uh, Supreme Court ruling saying na wala namang kailan, hindi yan elemento ng rape, and, and yet you would still hear Uh, front, yung dapat na tumutugon, ganun yung sasabihin sa'yo. Siyempre, ano yung impact sa'yo nung mga ganong sinasabi? So, kailangan talagang patuloy yung pagtitraining for a survivor-centered approach. And that's why Pero laban na, na, na. That's why, Tony Twilight, <laughs> every year, nagiging relevant pa rin yung 18-day campaign, the 16 days of activism. Actually, what we really hope no, na in the future, hindi na kailangan yung ganitong kampanya. That's what we really want to 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 see and with that uh, uh we will end the, the the conversation with asking you attorney twila what else right chief can we expect so work or sa campaigns na gagawin ng, ng chr for the remaining days of the campaign as well as regarding the pandemic Mm-mm. Ang CHR, medyo marami kaming gumagalaw ngayon ng mga projects. No? Sa aming regional offices, um, uh, masaya ako na aming regional offices ay ginagawa mm-hmm. for the second year yung tinatawag namin na GBV mapping. 
tawag na GBV, Gender-Based Mapping of Legal Referral Mechanism. Mm-hmm. So, ang 16 regional office namin pumupunta sa pili nila na local government unit at minamap nila at nakikipag-FGD sila sa duty bearers. Uh, duty bearers, ibig sabihin, police, social worker, yung mga barangay vaudes. At si, si pinag-usapan kung ano yung gaps ng mga mekanismo nila. Uh, at lalo na sa panahon ng pandemic. And then may separate na FGD with community women. And we think this is a very good process na locally ma-identify yung gaps. And once they create dialogues, they also ano din, address the gaps themselves. So hindi na kailangan at the national level. Uh, the design is national, pero the implementation is local. And hindi ko na sasabi na mag-promotion campaign kayo kasi automatic na sa kanila na once they hear na kaya ganito ma'am dahil hindi namin alam o di alam, alam na lang sa HR na o di mag-capacity building tayo, ito yung sagot. Or makikita na nila na, uy, kailangan pala kasi yung community women. So, localized yung mga responses. We also do that with communities. Meron din kaming women fisher folks and girls at risk of trafficking. FGDs din yung proseso. Pero we look at mga women in communities, in fisher, fisher communities. Kasi nga, nandun din yung kahirapan. Nandun din yung, dahil sa kahirapan, uh, maraming mga babae na pupunta sa parasan or at risk of trafficking. Gusto din natin malaman ano yung sitwasyon at paano yung tawid ito sa gobyerno as form of recommend, forms of recommendation. And meron din kaming ginawang pag-aaral with women with disabilities this COVID pandemic. Uh, meron kaming peer monitors na mga b- women with disabilities, sila mo mismo nag-monitor ng kapwa nila women with disabilities. I'm really proud of them. Meron kaming 42 all over the country, uh, nag-monitor sila sa NCR, sa Cebu, sa Cagayan de Oro, sila mismo yung nagsabi na ito yung karanasan ng mga kababaihang may kapansanan sa pandemic, ito yung rekomendasyon, at binabalik namin ito, at it covers vow. Binabalik namin ito sa mga uh, government agencies, so that grounded talaga yung recommendation. So, patuloy namin na ginagawa ito with our uh, regional offices, so, patuloy ang pagkakapanya, webinars, tuloy-tuloy lang. Uh, investigation, so kung uh, gusto nyo mag-report or humingi ng legal assistance, report lang kayo sa aming GBV portal and uh, we will reach out to you kung kayo ay nasa ibang parte ng Pilipinas, pinapasa namin yung report sa aming uh, regional office. So at least mag-guide kayo kung ano yung gagawin. Or in case gusto nyo na ma-investigahan dahil PNP ang involved or military involved, pwede din namin gawin yun. Or mostly din, may iba nagre-report, ayaw nila magsapan ng kaso. Hmm. Gusto lang nila may kausap or gusto nila may refer sa LUNAS or sa Philippine Mental Health Association. So ginagawa din namin yung mga yan. And then, policy advocacy, lahat ng mga nakalap namin ng mga situation, uh, ng mga kababaihan, lalo na sa vulnerable and marginalized, gaya ng urban poor, at yung mga IDP, pinapadala namin ito sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno. At na, nag, in fact, nagkaroon kami ng Joint Memorandum Circular with the ILG. Ang title ng Joint Memorandum Circular with the ILG ay Ensuring um, Gender Responsive uh, Interventions for COVID-19 mm-hmm. Pandemic at saka including uh, prompt, effective, survivor-centered response to VAW. We're hoping na magamit yung mga recommendations doon ng mga LGUs. And lastly, para sa mga advocate, uh, patuloy lang tayo sa paglaban and pag-resist. And I always say that every space is a space of resistance and every space is also a space of empowerment. So dapat ganun tayo gumalaw no? uh, at sa pagpapatuloy sa ating advokasya. Thank you so much, Attorney Twila, and thank you so much for such empowering words and for the work, of course, that CHR is doing. Uh, we expect, and uh, I think CHR is one of the toughest then uh, job in in the whole parang uh, government na ano no work. Kasi you're also in the position of making the government uh, accountable. So it's one of probably the hardest in terms of in uh, in all the advocacies and work that we do maraming salamat po uh, lagi for always uh, championing uh women's uh human women and human rights thank you uh, so much she we hope we can have you again no, in our activities yes attorney Twila. hopefully we can have you again in our future webcast we'll make sure po on our pasha ph to update um, our mga kapasya on yung mga efforts ng CHR and yung mga activities nyo rin po. 
Especially po, Attorney yes. Twyla, do yes. share if you have like, um, yung mga uh, updates nyo po, especially with the referral mechanisms and referral pathways na makakatulong. Kasi nakakatanggap din kami minsan ng mga tanong, ano ba saan basla pwedeng pupunta o lalapit. I think especially kung ano yung mga pagbabago sa referral pathways na meron sa panahon ng pandemic. Thank you so much po, Attorney Twyla, and see you hopefully in other uh, episodes. Bye-bye, ingat po lagi. Thank you, Attorney. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. Thank Ayan. you so much. We're so happy yes. with the sharing of Attorney Twyla and and dami kong natutunan and like really understanding more of what is the role and ano yung halaga ng mga ginagawa ng CHR. Yes, ako rin Miss Tets though. I was cut off a bit from the conversation for mm-hmm. a bit dahil sa internet issues. Pero sobrang naging hitik nga yung conversation. Uh, gusto ko especially yung parang in-emphasize ni Attorney Twyla na um, yung role ng uh, movements at uh, all of us getting together and yung demanding accountability parang it really um, i think parang na na ano, na ano niya yung heart ng campaign natin na safer in solidarity na you know let's all get together and it takes all of us uh, raising awareness and making sure pag alam mo yun pag nangyari na siya sa local or nangyari na siya sa isang parang micro situation people will be equipped to uh, handle these kinds of um, very difficult na situations nga Yes, and yung pinakapareho no, pareho natin na messaging with our campaigns is that we re, uh, we understand and we recognize that many forms of violence against women and girls, uh, all forms of gender-based violence, so nangyayari siya in all spaces and in different spaces, but what like what Attorney Twyla said, but all these spaces are also spaces of resistance. Yes, and we also said all these spaces can be spaces of solidarity uh, as well. Because... Um, uh, kaya maraming salamat talaga for, for CHR, the work that they do. And we hope to give more updates to our viewers, Kapasha viewers, sa mga uh, updates pa with CHR. And with that shift, tomorrow, December 10, is the culmination of the 16 days of um, uh, activism against gender-based violence. What can we expect pa na maaaring mangyari? Yes, tomorrow is the culmination of our 16 days of activism. And it's also... Uh, World Human Rights Day. So ayan, as part of World Human Rights Week rin, no? Um, part ng ating, um, ang ating malaking event na pwedeng, uh, that our Kapasha uh, viewers can look forward to is our online concert for a cause and fundraising activity for survivors of typhoons, Raleigh and Ulysses. So we continue to support uh, communities that were negatively affected uh, through various fundraising activities. At ito na yung culmination nito, ang ating online concert, hashtag Safer in Solidarity. So um, get ready po on tomorrow, December 10th, Human Rights Day, for a night of amazing performances. Here are some of our headliners, Bayang Barrios at Ang Naliagan, Janoy Danao, Pasada, uh, Miss Cookie Chua, Danny Fabella, Sir Ben Endriga, Village Idiots, Chikoy Pura, and Lou Mendes. So, and many, many more. So, um, all of these people, artists, advocates, and allies will get together tomorrow, 7 p.m. This will be live stream on our Pasha PH page as well as other pages of our partners. Just um, look up na lang on our uh, on our page kung, si- kung, kung sino yung mga partner pages na ito. Yes, a solidarity concert for um, tomorrow night. Please tune in and also invite others to watch and support the cause because all of the proceeds will go to our partners uh, for the relief and recovery efforts as well as to say thank you to all our partners, organizations, and individual advocates who supported the campaign. Maraming salamat po sa lahat. I will try to give uh, to uh, thank you then tomorrow. Kaya sana makapag-tune in din ang ating mga partners. And before we leave, uh, may mga pahay tayo. Uh, meron tayong pabilitin happy birthday kay Bean at pa-advance happy birthday kay Danica. Danica. Na nanonood sila ngayon habang may pa-shout out tayo sa kanila. Maraming salamat to our viewers and of course, you invite them for next week. All right, for next week, we have our uh, next episode, or I think our second episode of Shikahan with um, advocates, so where we will talk about um, provision of SRH services in the community. So exciting, exciting. So we've talked to government officials so far. Um, I think it's so important na contextualize nga sa community level ito lahat ng mga efforts na um, ginago in terms of SRH, RNGBV. So abangan po natin yan. 
Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po sa nanonood at kay Danny ka na nag-comment ng ha 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 ha. Maraming salamat. See you. Happy birthday, Dee.